Okay, welcome everybody to this webinar, which is on how to motivate your students through Christmas. And I came up with some uh, three really, really good ways to motivate students. Um, they are super exciting. I'm going to share with you a link to a, to a uh, it's a doc, and I'm going to put it in the chat window. Let's see if I can find it really quickly. It's called Keeping Your Students Motivated Through Christmas. And I'll share my screen in just a minute. And we have some people in the waiting room. Michelle, can you handle that? Excellent. Okay, in your chat, you will see a link to the spreadsheet that you guys can have. All right, and I'll go ahead and just share my screen now. And it looks like we should be sharing. If you guys cannot see my screen, somebody let me know. Otherwise, I think we're good. Okay, so the, the three things. First, um, this is keeping your students motivated through Christmas. We as teachers, we are teaching music, which is very much like teaching a language. We really do learn music like we learn a language. Um, the first thing we do when we when we learn music or a language is we listen. And so in listening, even as an infant, you learn so much. Um, if you were born in Japan and you're living around Japanese people with a certain dialect, certain accent, you pick up on all the innuendos. Well, it's the same thing with music. If you listen to classical music or jazz music or rock music, there are innuendos that you start to learn. Um, the next step in doing that in after listening is speaking and in music when we speak we speak the language of performance so we learn to play an instrument we learn to sing um, uh, most of us here i believe are piano teachers and so we teach our students to learn to speak by giving them a recital piece and having them learn to play the piece well the first order of business here is that we are going to give you a list of Christmas solos and duets that are really fun because you want your students to play something that makes them look really good. Oftentimes you'll give them a piece that's too hard and that piece will kill them. They'll lose their motivation and without motivation, it is so hard to teach. So finding really good pieces is super helpful. We are going to be compiling this list which we've already started and you can have this list if you just click on the link. You'll come over here and you'll see a list of songs. And Josh, I believe, can you put a link to this Santa is my papa on this one? Yep. No, wait, not the Santa is my papa. Graham, is yours in the duets? Oh, there are solos and duets at the bottom. Okay, so what you'll see when you open this up is you're going to start seeing these pieces with links on them, which is a brand new thing in Piano Marvel. We can now just click on a link and it'll take you to the song. You can even share that link with your students. If you want to print this song or play it just to hear it, you can click on this. And I believe I need to start sharing my computer sound with you. Computer sound. All right. So if you click on this little play button here, preview of the song. What else can you do? I think you can make it larger and preview that. Um, you can also go add to your cart. And if I believe if you have a subscription to Piano Marvel, all of this is free. So you just continue or check out and click on view sheet music in the library. 
And there is the Santa one. And then you can just print this PDF. This is, this is a really fun song that I think I'm going to demo with Sean. Sean, are you available to demo this with me? All right. Let's go find this in the software. Oh, I, I think there's also a really cool link now. Let's do it on this piano over here. Yeah. All this is brand new, so we haven't done these linking things before. I'm gonna show you some really cool ways that your students can share their own songs today. But let's just get over to, <laughs> I can't move this thing. What is it? How do you hide the zoom control at the top? Is it control H? No. Is it control alt H? Control shift H. I just pulled the whole Chrome window down. I found so it's it. Not under the. It's control shift alt and H for hide. Jeez. <laughs> Figured it out though. You have to use the whole, all your fingers to do it. Yep. All right. So now I can actually navigate. I'm going to move this over to here. And we'll go back to his song. I believe there's also a link that you can get right to the song if you click learn to play. And that'll take you, well, normally it would take you to the library. All right, this first one. Uh, I, I want to introduce you to this song because Josh Mills just wrote this on Friday and uploaded it into into Piano Marvel. You can find it in the user uploaded Christmas songs and you can see Josh Mills just put this one in. That's a duet. This is brand new, I believe, as of just today. Here we go. One, two, three, four, set, go. Nice. Josh, that is ingenious. Great song. It's, it's great because, oh, and I got a golden ticket. Sweet. That puts me at 80. Um, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But the, I like that the melody is just super simple. Um, I can give this to a number, one, number of my students. Um, with Maybe the younger sibling can do the top part and the older sibling can do the bottom part. That to me is a gem. Thank you for putting that in Piano Marvel and writing that last week. I believe it took him like one hour to write it and put it in. So really talented. Thanks, Josh, for sharing that with everybody. If you're looking for it just in Piano Marvel or that with along with any other songs that, that uh, users are putting in, you'll find this Christmas songs, user uploaded Christmas songs right there. And you'll see every day that somebody is putting a new song in. I'm going to show you how to put songs in and how to have your students do that a little later. But in the meantime, let's go back and talk about some more Christmas songs over here. Sean, what are, what are from, your, from this list, what are some of your favorite ones? You know, one of the songs I think is an amazing solo is uh, Your Arrangement of Carol of the Bells because it sounds amazing but I've had uh, level one students uh, learn that piece. And so that seems to be the magic in motivation, finding something that sounds cool and that is simple to play. But uh, that, that really is a great arrangement. It's the best arrangement I've ever seen because it keeps the hands in, in individual positions. And, but it sounds cool. The accompaniment's good on that. 
Very good. And I would, I would ask Josh, hey, Josh, to help the teachers out here, would you be able to put a link directly to these songs so that they can get to it right from the spreadsheet so they don't have to actually look it up in Piano Marvel? We'll have yeah. that done probably within the hour. So keep, just keep the spreadsheet handy. And we're going to be adding new duets as they come up. So always, if you're looking for some fresh music, Keep an eye on this on this list. Um, let's move to back to that document. And we're going to look at this part right here. In the end, we know the power of recitals, but sometimes we forget the power of video performance. Um, so what we've created was this piano video contest. It's simple. It's free. It's educational and there is a $500 prize. So if you have not had your students put in a video into this contest, let me show you how to do it. Just click on this link. Um, there are instructions with the info here with rules and prizes and stuff. But over here, you'll see there's an entries button and you can see the, the person in number one place right now has 373 views on their YouTube video. And this is Cade's video. And you could watch that if you just click on the link. this video it's only 34 seconds um, you can see how many views and how many comments this was super super easy uh, I actually I should go back to that video and just show you what I did with the camera uh, I wanted to make this super super easy but you notice and this isn't even my camera this belongs to the the uh, girl I said, let me see your phone and I'll do the recording. So as they were playing, you could see me moving to create more of a cinematic shot. Now you could put your camera and make it just a still shot, but I feel like the movement to me makes it just that more cinematic. What do you think, Sean? Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah, it's it's really interesting just what a little motion will do. You kind of have to have a steady hand. Um, if you don't have a, a, what is it, a gimbal? Nobody's nobody's got a gimbal. We keep this simple. So you just use your cell phone and just kind of move it around. Like this, a video project. They love it. You know, my, my son, uh, Nathan, uh, some of you have seen the, the classical showdown in, in the Piano Marble software. Uh, he had a great time with that. He, he'd only been playing the piano for two months. And so some of these pieces that we, uh, we do videos on, they're just fun. They're motivational. Yeah, this is his son. Never played the piano before. So tell me how, what, again, what Nathan's thoughts were when he created his video. You know, he was so proud. Um, matter of fact, every time somebody comes over to the house, he says, have you seen my video? <laughs> 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 and it's just something that creates a lot of confidence in the students. And while they're working on it, you know, it's, it's, it's more than just sitting there all by themselves playing a, a piece of music that maybe nobody will ever hear. And these days in COVID, uh, ex COVID land that we live in, you know, to have... Uh, a project like this that the whole world can experience and we can uh, en enlighten the entire world by our, our playing. It's, you know, I, I think this, I think the students realize that, how, how valuable it is, what they're doing. Now, I know a lot of teachers will make fun of this. Look at his hands. Um, you think you, you can criticize, look, his hand position is terrible, but he will learn hand position. I mean, and in, in, I believe you worked with him less than two months at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have a problem with that hand position? I'm good with that. <laughs> if I can get him to practice, you know, when, when he's a little farther down the road. And anyway, I, we've been working on that a little bit since. But uh, I think it's more important that we 
keep students engaged. I, I learned this from you, actually, because I, from my schooling that I had, I'm thinking, oh, the first thing you got to learn is to make sure you're like this and playing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you, you, you enlighten me to the fact that it's more important to keep students motivated and to focus on the most important things, which is inspiration and fun and excitement and those kind of things. Definitely. Um, and video projects, I think, is the future of piano teaching. It's there is actually video is the future of so many things. If you can't put together a video of yourself, um, you're going to be, I would say, at a big disadvantage. So piano teachers, we can really help our students really learn. I remember my daughter, she, her first things that she did with video was in creating her own performances when she was younger. And when she went to college, she was ahead of Everybody else, it seemed, because she could, she actually had some experience doing it in piano lessons of all of all places. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to say, it used to be that the pinnacle for our, our profession was we'd prepare everybody for the recital, and they go up there and they're scared to death, and if they if they fail, then they 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 they, they hurt their their confidence forever. But with video, you know, it's something that lasts forever, and I, I think video is a new recital. I think it really this is. is really where where things are going. Yeah, and if you look. What's really cool is Nathan put this, this performance together and how many people could sit in a recital? He's had over 3,800 views. So that's something he could say, wow, over, almost 4,000 people have watched me perform. Um, and I don't know what it is about this new generation, but there's something that they really love about making themselves visible on the internet with their performance. They will actually practice so, so hard yeah. to make themselves shine when they know that they're in the spotlight on the internet. It is the coolest thing. And you can leverage that motivation to get them to practice and make them sound really good. So video is the very first thing that we're talking about. And I'm going to encourage everybody here, if you have not put a student into this piano video contest, to do it as soon as you can. Get a student who's ready with a song or get them ready with a song, a duet, a solo, whatever, and then put them into the contest. Again, I'll walk you through how to do it. Just click on this link, the piano video contest, and then go over to submit a video. And this is the hard part. They have to put in their name, their email, the teacher's name if they have it, and then paste the video URL from YouTube. That's it. You hit submit. And then in an hour later, your name will pop up on this list. And you can see um, it, it, rank, it ranks them by the views, I believe. Yeah, it is. So 300 views, 300 views. So as they get more people to view their video, they actually jump up in rank. And I believe the top 20 are going to be judged for that $500 prize. And then we'll have a, some judges, a panel of judges choose the, the best video. In the end, it doesn't really matter whether it's the best video. It's just the project of going through this process. They learn so much. And you as a teacher will learn more than you can imagine. So that's the step one, get your students to learn a really cool piece and put it into the piano video contest. Okay, let's move to step two. This one gets me super excited. Um, we as teachers know that reading music will open a world of opportunity where you can just sit down and read a sheet of music. You can learn faster. It's so much fun. I was, a very typical kid. I didn't see the, the importance of reading and I didn't have a teacher who, who expressed how important it was to read music. Um, I have learned my lesson and I, I can see it in my students that sometimes they don't see the importance of reading, but I can see it. And so I do push them to read every day. This Piano Christmas Contest, this challenge, is the, I would say the biggest tool to improve sight reading that I've seen for my students who are intermediate through beginner through an intermediate. Um, even the advanced students, they learn a ton through this piano Marvel Christmas challenge. Some of you have seen what it is. 
and some of you haven't. If you haven't, you can watch this video. It talks about what it is and how to do it. And I'll run through a song really quickly that, that um, puts you in the challenge. And I'll show you how the leaderboard works. Um, what I've done in my studio, I'll show you, I've put together a chart and I've given you like all these little artsy things. This is not my, my forte here, but it's a really, really cool chart that I'll show you how to put together. Let's look at the Christmas challenge first and how it works. I'm gonna to go to Piano Marvel and I'll log in and there are plenty of free songs in here that you could do. So if somebody doesn't have a, a premium subscription, you just type in Christmas, hit enter. And in the Piano Marvel library, you'll see these golden tickets. And I'll zoom in so you can see this a little better. You can see that I have 28 out of 80 tickets in this. So I have some more tickets I could do. Over here in this one, I've done two out of 12 tickets. These are, all these are free, these Christmas songs and these Christmas duets. These Christmas duets you will definitely want to go through. Um, I, we didn't get to go through a lot of the solo stuff because I was thinking you would go through it on your own, but let me just show you these duets and which of your students could handle this Jingle Bells duet? Well, the Primo is pretty simple. Let me just open it and show you. That you can get nearly any one of your students to play. The next one, I actually went in and created a, an easy secundo and a regular secundo. So the, easy, the regular secundo looks like this. So they've got this jingle bells. So it's pretty easy, but it's hard for some kids. So what I did was I've condensed that if you have a, a younger student or somebody who's a newer beginner, just have them start this, the easy secunda, which is half the speed, everything on quarter notes, and much easier than the other one. When you put them together, this is what the duet looks like. You can do, here's the easy duet where the student is playing the treble staff and either the teacher can play the secondo or the, they can get another student to play this and record like I did with my, with my students. Sean, you wanna play this with me really quickly? We're just gonna do it in the prepare mode. One, two, ready, go. So it sounds good. They can, they can easily impress an audience with that, but it's been simplified so much that it makes it so that almost anybody could do that. I like that you also have the option to, if let's say that same person goes into the easy secondo, well, you could say, hey, now that you finished that, how would you like to do the advanced secondo? And maybe Sean, you could play this one with me. Let's open up the secundo. I say that my daughter Olivia got her first golden ticket on Sunday by passing out this Jingle Bells. That's awesome. She was so excited. <laughs> and she passed out the second one just like that because it was so exciting to get the first one. All right. Ready? A one, two, set, go. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go I, I, I better slow down a little so bit. So if you buy Jingle Bells or Jingle Let's do it. <laughs> I was going too fast. So da, 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 ready, go. Okay, that's better. See. Ready, go. Can't hear anything. It's audio's off. Now. Yes, that's helpful. I, I what we'll do then we'll just play it with the assessment mode, and you should be able One, to hear this. Two, set, go. Speed that up. 
speed. Let's try it at this speed. One, two, set, go. golden ticket so whenever you do a christmas song and you get over a 96 percent it gives you an additional golden ticket and i'll hit this show rank i would have your students live in this ranking thing because it shows a live report of how all of your students are doing i am now within 100 spots of first place some people have actually gotten <laughs> some ridiculous number of Christmas songs that they've learned. Can you imagine how, how well a student would read when they go through that many Christmas songs? So My I goal is- know, Does Evelyn actually sleep at night? Uh, <laughs> you know, how, how does she get that many? She, Evelyn, you, you must be an amazing sight reader by at this point. Evelyn is in this show. Evelyn, can you talk to us a little bit? How did you get up there? You're muted. Uh, how did I get there? I played a lot. <laughs> Why are you playing so many Christmas songs? Because I want to encourage my students to join me so that our group rank will be high. And I've got one student that I, she's only, I'm wherever I am at three or four, she's two behind me. So, and her sight reading has just increased so much. I'm looking forward to January and seeing where she is back in her level. She's at level five. And uh, the sight reading is fantastic. So I'm doing it to get my, I've only got four students in the group, but our group is uh, pretty high up too. Where are we? One, two, three, four. Yeah, let me, let me share my screen and Let's just take a look at the leaderboard. Over here, you can see the buttons across the top. You've got individual rank. My class rank, you can see in my class, I already have a student in the 100 club and I am 19 behind him. Mason, I was kind of letting him try to catch me. So he's, he's got his eye on me. He was trying to pass Miley. He passed her yesterday. He did this all since yesterday. He was in the 20s and now he's 62. Um, in the past, Check this out. In the past week, what, nine days, eight days, my studio has learned 539 Christmas songs. That to me is gold. Uh, in the past, I'd be like happy if they'd learn one or two Christmas songs. Um, now I'm going for like thousands of Christmas songs because it's, it's just a very different world. Um, Technology has made things, uh, things that were impossible before. And I'm just super excited. My, the group rank here, this is where we rank as a group. We're in 10th place right behind Mary C, Joshua W, Linda B, Kimberly. Evelyn is in fourth place with over a thousand. Awesome. Nice job, Evelyn. Good job, Evelyn. For an inspiration for me. So these teachers who have learned how to motivate their students to do this, and this is ridiculous. Lori D, her studio in eight days has learned almost 2,000 Christmas songs. That is super, super impressive. And then if any teachers get into the 100 club right here, they qualify for a $100 gift card drawing. Um, so I would set your goal as a studio. First thing is to get your students excited to get into the 100 club. The second step would be to set an individual goal for each of your students, I'll click on the class rank to get into the 100 club. Like all of my students, we have set a goal to get to 100. I'm gonna go back to the spreadsheet or the, your document here and you can see I've, I've made this little poster. You can't see it really well here. Let me ex just expand this, see if you guys can see a little clip better. So you can see the pin here She's moving up her pin onto a new number. 
And so I have a hundred songs. And when you hit this gold club, that is the 100 club. Um, if you want to make one of these for your studio, all you do is you just click on this little link right here that says Studio Christmas Challenge Tracking. And then I have put leaderboards together for you, like the single page, you can do a three page all to 100 or a three page condensed. I'll, I'm going to tell you which one I prefer to do. Uh, and I'll tell you why, but you also have materials to make this board. Like if you want a cork board, um, I've shown just a link where you can go to Amazon and purchase this cork board. If you just want to do it the easy way, or you can go down to the store and pick one up locally. Um, but large map, map push pins, this is the pin that she was moving. These are phenomenal. You just get a set of pins if you want. Put that on, um, print your own art. I even made, like I found some free art that you can have. And you just print these pages and then you cut them out and you put them on your cork board or on your um, magnetic dry erase board. Um, what else have I made for you? Oh yes, um, Christmas cutouts. If you don't wanna do your own artwork, I found some artwork on Amazon. You can look yourself, but some of these things you just print or just, just have them ship it. It's only 17 bucks. And then you can make your own cork board without having to do any of the work of cutting stuff out. Um, dry erase board, same thing. You can do a dry erase board if you prefer, but then your push pins, they're gonna need to be magnetic. So I even put a link to some magnetic push pins that you can use to track your students as they go through this. Um, again, this is, this is just a motivator thing. Uh, my goal as a studio is I need to move my students up toward this 100 club. To get all of my students to learn 100 songs, that's my goal as a teacher. I find motivation as the hardest thing to do as a teacher. And so I'm always pulling my hair out thinking of new ways. What's a new thing that I can do to motivate my students. And this is just one of the new things. You're welcome to try this with me. But even if you build this board, they're not gonna get it done. You have to find a way to, to motivate them and to see this. So I, yesterday I put together a, um, it was a text, a group text to my students. And I said, is it okay if I show this to a hundred teachers tomorrow? And they're like, oh yes. And so, are you curious between yesterday and today, how many new songs that they did? I am. Um, let me just show you. I actually wrote down how many students I had yesterday. They had 452. So 452 and today we have 540. So just in one day, we had over nine, oh, about 90 songs passed off just from last night to this morning when I sent this message. So texting, texting in as a group, learn to give them a pat on the back. Let them be recognized that they're passing songs off. This is a student, she had 50 yesterday and she said, yes, you can share that with the teachers and she went and did 10 more. Um, so texting, Marco Polo group, uh, whatever you can think of, whether it's a group me or an email of everybody, Try new things and see if you can get them invested. Give them a pat on the back and recognition goes a long, long way. Um, does, it, does anybody have any other suggestions on how to motivate students to, to practice um, with, with this and getting, getting them done? Sean, you've, you've struggled with this. Tell me your struggles. Let me- uh, well, I've bribed my kids. I told them I'd give them a dollar for every song they passed off. Did it work? <laughs> it actually is. Yeah. But I could have done it better because you told, you told your son, Josh, that, uh, that uh, you'd give him a hundred dollars and he passed off a hundred. So it's different to say, I'll give you a hundred, a dollar for every song compared to I'll give you $10 if you get to 10 songs, because it's easy to stop at six when you start getting tired. But if you tell them we get to 10, I'll give you this level, or get to 20, 50, and it doesn't need to be money. You know, we, you, I've, I've enjoyed in, in listing my, the parents of my students over the years, because I don't want to pay money out of my own pocket for my students. 
but we can enlist the parents. Um, and there's other things we can do in the studio. Recognition, I think, sometimes is more valuable than anything else. Absolutely. Recognition is the big thing. Um, and I did tell Josh I'd give him 100 bucks if he could get to the 100 Club. He did it in four days. <laughs> Yeah, he figured out I made a hundred bucks in four hours. It's 25 bucks an hour. <laughs> and then Miley, I told her the same thing. So I'm not giving my students money. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to tell their parents, make a deal with your child. If they get to whatever club that you give them something, I'm not going to give it to them. <laughs> I will do like things like candy or pencils or whatever, just that, but the recognition is the big thing. Um, learn how to motivate students. That's the genius in teaching. My mom would have paid anything to get me to stop complaining about practicing when I was getting started. I mean, she really would have. That, that yeah. was the hardest thing for her to go through. Like, do I let him quit or I try to keep him pushing him? Or Because my, 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 my teacher was old fashioned. She didn't understand technology. She didn't understand that her job was not to teach, uh, you know, perfect perfectness in piano. Her job was to motivate me, to inspire me. So we kind of butted heads, but uh, my mom would have done anything to see me motivated uh, with some of the tools like we have. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to, let's go back to our sheet here and take a look. We've already talked about two things. Number one, speak. Number two is read. So speaking is performance. Um, the goal here is to put your students into the piano video contest. Number two, the read. It is to get your students to commit to a challenge, get to the 100 club. They will read, read, read. You will be shocked how it improves their sight reading. Um, keep it exciting. Number, four, number three is this right idea. Now, how many of us piano teachers have tried to get our students to write music, to compose, and we have failed? I will admit, I have tried this for years and years and years. And to varying degrees, but for the most part, it's been pretty dismal. Um, my students haven't really learned how to write music well, and I blame that mostly on me. Um, I just haven't had a good system with how to do that. So I decided to come up with a way to make it simple for teachers. And there is a four-step process that I came up with. Uh, by the way, what are the benefits to writing music? Honestly, that's like the culmination is creative writing. It's the ultimate way for students to really express themselves. This is my song. Um, but there's a lot of skills that are involved. Like even when you're writing uh, like the, a language, you start off with letters and you have these kindergartners trying to form A's and B's and C's. And they don't know what they're going towards. The teacher knows that they're, they're teaching them the basic skills that they're going to need to write creatively so that they can be a benefit to society and it would, it'll benefit them to be literate. Well, in piano, it's a very similar thing. There are, there are basic steps that you need to go through. And so what I've done here at the bottom, you can see this number three, right? I've made it so simple. All you do is you use this songwriting worksheet. Open that up. And there are four simple steps. Do not skip a step. You skip a step and you will find that you have gaping holes in your, in your knowledge. Um, step one is using notation software. In 10 minutes, I can show you how to do that with this video. So you go in, you watch the video, and then you do the project exactly as I've explained in the video. And you can have your students go in and do this step in no time at all. Within less than an hour, they will have step one done. Step two, write a background accompaniment. This is something that is more of a phenomenon in our era because we are so used to good background music. Um, just the simple doesn't, do it. You have to have drums and a bass and other things in there. I will show you in 10 minutes in this video how to do that. So simple. And this is with MuseScore, which is a free notation software. Uh, it used to be we wrote on paper. We don't write on paper anymore because you cannot share it with people. And the sharing is the biggest key to everything. Again, step three, share your song. Now, there are three steps to this one. 
because we first have to upload it to a sharing platform, which is Piano Marvel. Um, number two, you have to learn how to slice it. So prepare your song so that it's easy to learn for other people. So when somebody finds your song, they'll learn it. They'll be able to learn it because you've prepared it really well. I've seen really good sliced music and really bad sliced music. So spend some time on chopping that and mincing it. And I show you how to do that in six minutes and then share your song. I show you how to do that one in two minutes and 54 seconds. I'm actually going to go through and do one today and just show you how it's done. But step four then is split up into the project. This is the, uh, what you really are after is you want to take your song and create an arrangement of a well-known Christmas song. And you want to try to do this before Christmas and then you want to share that in Piano Marvel. Now, how do you do that? Well, let me show you. When you go to Piano Marvel, I got to hide my little button. Control Alt H. There it is. And let's go over to Piano Marvel. Here we go. When you go to the library, you will notice at the bottom left, there's this create and upload section. And this is how people have been putting their songs into this Christmas, upload your own Christmas songs. So if you can get your stu each of your students to upload one, one Christmas song, they will learn an enormous amount. Um, let's go to the create and upload button and show you how it's done. Over here, this is a list of all my Christmas songs or all, all my songs that I've that I've uploaded myself. If you wanna put in your own, you just click upload and you have to put in a MIDI and an XML, which I showed you how to do already through the videos. That's why I said, don't skip any of those steps. But once you've created it, whoops, I just closed that. Once you've created it, how do you share it into the Christmas contest? It's pretty easy. You can see some of them I've already done. Do you see these green presents on there? This is brand new. Um, and then, oh, there's one that I've uploaded. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. But it's been submitted to the challenge, but it's been rejected. Um, and it's just because it wasn't a Christmas song. And if it's gray, it means it's been uploaded. So I'm going to do a song that, yeah, it's not even a Christmas song. Let's just do like a song I put in called All of Me. And if you click on the share button, you click the submit to Christmas challenge. And then you click submit. And that's it. It's done. And then your button turns a color. Um, it says the song has been submitted to the Christmas challenge and is pending review. I'm going to close this and I'll show you what happens on the admin side. On the admin side, we get notice uh, via an email. If I click on this, there should be an email. Piece submitted to the Christmas contest. And all we do is we open the piece. And it shows us your song that you've submitted. And we will look at several things to see if you've put it together well. And we can look for a PDF in that. We can look to see if you've chopped it and minced it for students, or we can try it and see if your timing lines up and everything's working. And then we can approve it or reject it. So I am going to show you the process of approving. Let's see. Oh, I'm gonna have to open this up in a Firefox browser. Um, while I'm doing this, Josh, what do you think uh, of the process of how easy it was? Because I know I had asked you, would you put a song in and it took you a while. Did you think it was going to be pretty hard? To write the song or to share it? To share it. No, yeah, it wasn't. Uh, it was actually really smooth. I like how easy it was to share it. and uh, I think it got done well by the guy that developed it on our team. So. What do you think the significance is of people being able to, to go through this process? How much do you learn in the process of doing this? Of uploading music? Yeah. 
Well, I mean, there's lots of things. Uh, I mean, just writing music itself is a whole learning process, but uploading it, um, there's a lot of benefits. I mean, having to be able to make sure that you get music that's written uh, as best as you can for your students. I think that's super important and it's a skill that you learn. I think also being able to, um, you know, have sheet music look good that they can buy on a PDF, having a MIDI accompaniment, that's cool. Also uh, slicing the music, like that's a huge uh, art form, kind of like you were mentioning earlier, like being able to make it so that students can learn really, really well uh, or fast a piece um, by you chopping it up. I think that's a really awesome thing that you get to benefit from and learn from as you upload it for them. Is Was uh, chopping and slicing a piece into learning segments uh, a process for you to learn how to do that? Uh, it's pretty intuitive, I think. I think it's one of those things that if, uh, if you've been doing, like, if music's just kind of something that you're, you're into and you understand, then like, it, it makes a lot of sense, you know? So I think all the tools that we have there, we have a lot of tools there that make it super fast that so you're not sitting there doing it for hours and hours. I did it actually for the first five minutes of this, uh, webinar I did, I sliced up the, uh, the duet as you were talking. So, oh. uh, yeah. So it's ready for people to, to use now with yeah. their students. That's awesome. All right. So let me just show you a couple of songs um, that were uploaded yesterday. And this is the, the admin where we see, we look for songs that have been into the contest. You can see this all of me. That one is actually not a Christmas song. I'm going to reject it. <laughs> and let's go back to then the Christmas tree is coming soon. This one is composed by Grayson Stranford, composed by Trip Stanford. This is interesting. This is an original. If I open this song, I can reject or approve it, but I can also go view this song. And let's see if this song is any good. Oh, my view piece is, is not working. I'll have to figure out what's wrong with that link. Um, but as soon as I accept or reject this song, everyone will have access to that in this bundle right here. And the most recent one will show up on top. So as soon as you get accepted, you will see your show up here and then people will begin to play your song. Now here's the really cool part. When you go over to the, remember the leaderboard here, you can see your entries, which we didn't talk about. This just shows every song that you've done, but this user upload one is really cool. You can see that I have uploaded this one. My most favorite one or most played one is Jingle Bells. Um, with almost a thousand perfected tickets on that. That is pretty impressive. And it's fun for me to see that people are playing my songs and that they like it. Um, Josh just put in one called uh, Santa. Do you hear me? There's, nope, this is Soren. Uh, here we go. Do I Hear Santa? And his duet that he just put in has one. That was Sean and my, Sean and I did that one just now. So you can see now Josh has a ticket. He has nine tickets on this piano solo, but on his secondo, he's got 18 people have played it. And this jolly old Saint Nick, where's your, uh, oh, here on your primo, he already has 42 people who've played his song. Imagine your students put in a, a song and they say, oh, look, people are actually playing my music. That is meaningful to students. They will work for something when you motivate them to do that. So this is our third step then. And that is, let me go back to the doc and come over to, here we go. Step three, which is write music and go through that songwriting worksheet just step by step. And it really, it's really a super simple way to get started on this, but the, it's gonna culminate with you putting in a song or you're having your students put in a song to this Christmas 
contest. They will learn so much from doing that and they will feel an ownership. Um, and I, I think you're going to find that that's one of the, their, the greatest things that they have felt they've accomplished. If you can get your students to do all three of these things before Christmas, they will have a phenomenal learning experience. Phenomenal. Um, one that maybe they've never had before. Put in a video into the piano contest. Learn a song, make a video, put it in. Read, get the 100 Club in the Christmas challenge and then the right enter a Christmas contest song that you put in you, or create, write a Christmas song and then enter into the Christmas challenge. And those are the three steps. Now, I'm going to just mention this for teachers because we've, I've, I've had a, a conversation with many teachers about should we have the teachers also participating with the students or should the teachers not participate with the students? Um, I have my personal feelings. I believe that we lead by example. And I have noticed when I participate with my students, they feel like they are doing something with me. And it's much easier for me to motivate them to work on that and to see, hey, I am doing the same thing that you are doing. Not to mention, I had a teacher call me yesterday and she was doing this, um, what, oh, the, in fact, let me look at the leaderboard and see if I can show you who this is. She called me yesterday and she said, you need to talk to your teachers about this. Uh, Kelly Farrell. Oops, Kelly. Oh, we're in this group rank. Kelly Farrell, her studio has 311 tickets. And she said what she noticed is as she went into Piano Marble and she started going through some of these songs, she was finding some really, really cool things. She said, oh, that's perfect for Johnny or that's perfect for so-and-so. I'm going to have him do this recital piece. And she was having fun learning, but more than anything, she was getting ideas for her students to do that. Plus her students were seeing that she's doing it with them. Um, and I thought, you know, I didn't think about the fact that you'd be going through quantities of student pieces that you could get ideas for. But that was just another, another reason to do this. And I think it's time to open this up to questions. Um, oh, yes. I was going to say just these two more things. Try things that are new. It may be hard for you to do something that you have never done before. Um, if you've never done entered a song into the contest, just get in and do it. Um, also, lead by example. Like, Don't expect your students to go in and do the assignments you haven't done yet. Uh, you won't be nearly as helpful to them if you tell them to do it and you haven't done it yourself. Uh, see how long it takes you to do it. Uh, it'll open your eyes. And then, so if you go in through each one of these things and you do your own Christmas video, I'm gonna do one this week. I'll make a Christmas video and put it into the piano contest. That's my goal. I haven't done one yet personally. Um, the read, I'm doing that one do it yourself in the Christmas contest and then do the writing the own song and putting it into the Christmas challenge as well. Um, and then act now is the last thought. Do not let your fear of the unknown stop you. So with that, let's go ahead. I'm going to shrink this down. So it's back on one page. Let's go ahead and open this to questions. I have a idea to share. I didn't share it when it was time to share it, but I'm ready now. Who is this? This is Ann Hansen. Ann, I'm trying to find your video and I'll spotlight you. Oh, I found you. Okay. Let me spotlight your video <laughs> so people can see you. Okay. okay Ann. Yeah. We'd love to hear your, so, your ideas. So we started this Christmas chain and it starts here and every time the kids get a christmas song and they pass it off they make a chain they write their name on it goes all around my ceiling and <laughs> how many links do you have 
<laughs> I don't know, but it stopped here. And my goal is to go clear out here, out the door. And then I had my husband put up the tree early so we can go all the way around my ceiling out here to my Christmas tree. And then I want to wrap it around my Christmas tree. That's awesome. That is the coolest thing I've seen. I love it. <laughs> that is so cool. You're going to have to get into the thousand club for that. <laughs> I know. I, I think I might have to do it myself, but I've been working. Yes, on it. <laughs> definitely do it yourself because it, it yeah. changes everything when you participate. Right. The right. students love it when you're helping them with the goal. It's like a team effort. Yeah. I love it. That's, Thank you. That is a phenomenal idea. I'm going to have to do that one. Thank you. It's cheap, really cheap. Yeah. Just get some <laughs> construction paper and glue. Uh huh. Cut it in strips. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Who else has any ideas that they'd like to share or questions about how to, your, your circumstance and what you're facing? Maybe we have some ideas between the group that we can help answer those questions. Any ideas? Let's uh, maybe then. I had a question for you. Yeah. I thought that somewhere I saw that um, there was a list of Christmas songs that they could do that oh, yes. were just um, rearrangement, rearranging a familiar song. Can I choose any Christmas song? Yeah, let me, let me show you how to find that list. Um, I, I have to go search for it again. Yeah, so you don't have to search it. I will show you. It's right in the spreadsheet that we're working in. Okay. Share my screen. And if you go into this number three item, which is your songwriting worksheet, and you open that, you can see it in two places. Number one, um, if you go all the way down to the bottom, there's a resource page, and you can see like this Christmas song list. But it's also in step four, which is when they create an arrangement of a well-known Christmas song, they'll watch the video on how to do it. And I actually take a song and I, I walk through how to do this step by step. But this Christmas list, song list, looks like this. And you can see in green, these PDs, this is the public domain. If you scroll down the list, the songs that are in red, they are copyright. And so we can't do Santa Claus is Coming to Town because it's, in the, it's under copyright. Uh, Winter Wonderland, all the best ones are under copyright. Bummer. But there is have, a good have a, jolly, list. have a holly jolly Christmas. Is that in there? Let's see. Have a holly jolly Christmas. Yeah, okay. Nope, it's not even in there. I don't know whether it's in the public domain or not. Um... You have to Google that one. So does that mean that I can? Well, what I do is I come over to Google and I'll say, is have a holly jolly Christmas in the public domain. And Public domain, have a holly jolly Christmas. Oh, there it is. Holly jolly Christmas. It was written in 1965, which means it is not in the public domain. It is under copyright. Oh, darn. Okay. Yeah. You can write a song like that or with the lyri same lyrics. That. Um, I just figured out how to play it in five finger pattern with your thumb sharing a note. I can't remember which it was. G yeah. And <laughs> they no, don't you can always it. you can always upload the song and share it with your students. We just can't share it publicly with the world. See how do how do I just share? You mean I can upload it to Piano Marvel? Yes, just you share can. It with my so if you go over to this page over here, and let's say you've you've had this All of Me, which is uh, under public domain or under copyright, what you do is you just click the share button and you say I want to share it with all of my students, or you can just share it with an individual student like I shared this with this user. So you can just type in their email address and it'll come over into their, their uh, folder, into their library. So you do the work and then you share it with all of your students and they have access to that song, but you can't share it with the world 
Um, another thing that's really cool, this is brand new, this um, came yesterday. This is a link that if you copy this, you can actually email the link of your song right to them. And so if you email this and just say compose message and say, and Hanson, and I can say, here's my song. I want you to learn it. And then I'd send it to you. Okay, so you just got an email from me. And if you click on that email and click on that, it'll just open up the sheet of music and you can say, learn to play it in piano marble. That's so cool. And it opens the song. So there's a, this, that's brand new as of this week, that sharing link, that link sharing thing. Um, so okay. lots of really, really cool things to do. Great question though. Yeah. And, and I know I went through those, Thank those um, a lot of that stuff super, super fast, but it's because I have all the material that you need in those documents. Yes, I need to look into that document. Thank you so much. Okay, and I'm going to be watching two things from you guys. I'm going to be watching for your students, uh, your leaderboard on the Christmas challenge and how many golden tickets your studio has. And the second thing I'm gonna watch for is how, uh, like when you personally as the teacher have put your first song in, because I would do it as the teacher first, um, put in your own song, upload it into Piano Marvel. You can do your Mary Had a Little Lamb first and then do your Jingle Bells, upload that, and then start having your students do it. Um, it should only take you an hour or two to learn how to upload your own song, even if you've never used MuseScore before. Yep, just follow those instructions step by step. This should be pretty easy. That's the beauty of videos. You can make a video of instructions and then just hand it over and don't have to show a million people step by step. So does anybody else have any other questions? Are you guys ready to get, get to work? We ready? Okay. Yes. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Aaron. You are so welcome. I, uh, I wish I had a joke. I could end on a joke. I always like to end on a joke, but I don't have, I, didn't I have, have any. Joke. Joke. Who has one? I, I do. Sue Rudholm. Okay, Sue, let's hear it. Okay. Do you know how to keep a turkey in suspense? How? I'll tell you at the next webinar. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I do I That's do have a good a question. one. I do yes. have a question. So, um, are they are there any Christmas songs that people without an account, you know, can access, or are those absolutely? Oh, okay. there are dozens of songs with. Uh, if if you don't have a premium account, you can use with the free account, um, or you can go to the Piano Marvel website and look. I can just show you really fast. Am I sharing my screen? So you can either get them right in Piano Marvel or you can go to just the Piano Marvel website and go to the music library, even without an account. And you can find Josh Mills, there it is, Do I Hear Santa? Or you can do a search for a song, um, even without an account. Just go over there and you can see the sheet music. Okay. You can even hear right. it. Yep. Excellent okay. question though. Sometimes I forget about that one. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, if there are no further questions, we'll go ahead and wrap up and I will see you guys in the Christmas challenge. Have a good one. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.